Good morning. We have started sucker rod pumping or pump jack or beam pump or nodding donkey or uh, horse head uh, or beam pump. This pump actually reciprocity pump I already told and it is having one surface unit, one surf surface unit. What is surface unit or surface surf subsurface unit? Surface unit like this is uh, your ground level and you have walking beam you have seen in previous lecture and there will be one stuffing box sort of thing through this stuffing box there will be T junction then whole uh, rod is coming down to your one pumping assembly okay and it will go through one tubing and tubing will be inserted inside one casing so casing normally it will be cemented properly and on cemented you must be perforating so once perforation done this will be your oil and gas zone so oil gas maybe water basically these three fluids will be moving through these pores so if water level is very low then oil and gas you can get but in many cases you are having very high amount of gas so it can be considered as a gas well in some cases very high quantity of oil is there so it will be considered as a oil well now whether oil oil or gas well if reservoir pressure is very low you need one pumping mechanism so srp or sucker rod pumping mechanism is a reciprocating type pump or positive displacement pump it uh, needs very low amount of uh, fluid to be pumped uh, if very high volume of fluid is there then different other type of pumps are there but for low volume fluid basically we use sucker rod pumping system again there are some other conditions such as viscosity and uh, crooked well etc but for if we assume this is very straightforward or straight well bore and uh, it is not having very high viscosity very no, not very high amount of sand or gas then you can use srp and srp is a most commonly used sucker rod, uh, artificial lifting system in the oil industry so whenever you see any uh, oil industry picture so normally they'll be putting one sucker rod pump picture because this is very common and it is very much visible from the surface and surface unit will will have like pitman arm and we have uh, crank crank will be connected uh, to one gearbox gearbox will be connected to your motor through maybe v weld okay so motor will be here here will be v v belt here will be uh, this is crank this is gearbox this is gearbox this is walking beam okay and this is uh, stuffing box so detail discussion we have done yesterday uh, in the previous lecture now we are going to study about surf, su subsurface part the part below the ground okay below the ground part will be consisting your sucker rod sucker rod or metallic rod uh, because this is the term coined as sucker rod pump so that's the rod name also sucker rod so it is sucking well work fluid and it is delivering to the surface it is sucking and giving energy and giving to surface okay uh, so it will have one bottom hole assembly B H A or bottom hole assembly bottom hole assembly or BHA so BHA or bottom hole assembly it will consist a plunger and barrel uh, pl plunger and barrel and plunger and barrel will contain standing valve and traveling valve and it will also contain like sliding nipple uh, how to ha uh, hold this pump at the bottom so that sort of mechanism also will be there in the when we are discussing about subsurface unit of sucker rod pump so sucker rod pump has two part one will be heavy unit on the surface another will be simpler unit in the inside the well bore but although it is i'm saying it is simpler but if you see the long rod like say two kilometer three kilometer or five thousand ten thousand feet what uh, well bore depth in that case the long rod will weight will be very heavy so to maintain this heavy mass moving up and down and uh, it is giving that much momentum it requires very high amount of uh, stress analysis so if you do not do proper analysis then what will happen it can break uh, at certain uh, point of time 
and normally this will be a tensile break because compression force normally it will not be there. So, because of tensile and uh, uh, other issues the rod can break when rod is breaking again you have to remove the whole rod you have to fix it. So, that will be expensive affair. So, whenever you are completing well bore or you are fixing any artificial lift your target should be well bore should be producing for longer duration of time with fixed production rate. And if you are changing saccharide pump or any other artificial lifting system uh, frequently right? so within 3 months, 6 months, 1 year. So, your cost will be increasing. So, to reduce the cost you have to synchronize everything together reservoir to your bottom hole assembly, to your rod, to your surface unit all together must be synchronized properly. So, that there will be no any unbalance or no extra forces will go anywhere and you will get stable continuous production for certain amount of time. So, that should be your target, but if well bore is giving regular failure then that well bore you have to study sometimes there is a problem well. Problem well means you install certain uh, pumping mechanism again it will fail, it will fail and uh, engineers will be repairing again, but uh, because one reason or other reason the system will fail. But the engineer's target will be not to fail, maybe you will get lower production, but system must be stable and not to fail for longer period of time. Now, first you have to understand what the bottom layer assembly, one as bottom assembly will contain plunger, barrel, traveling valve, standing valve, it is looking like this. Okay, it will have one barrel, barrel will have one standing, so barrel is like this. Okay, so barrel will have one hole here, and plunger will go like this. Plunger will have again another small ball, is called valve. Okay, and it will be moving up and down. So plunger, this is called standing valve standing valve. So, normally this barrel will be fixed. Okay. You, are, you are holding barrel. Okay. Now, your plunger is moving up and down. Plunger, this is called plunger. In IC engine term or other mechanical engine term, they will be saying piston, but in oil and gas industry, they will be using the term plunger and this is barrel. Okay. So, inside barrel, there will be one ball, small ball called standing valve and plunger another cylinder inside the barrel. This is plunger a uh, barrel. So, plunger will be inside and plunger will be moving up and down barrel is fixed. Okay. When barrel is fixed, you have one ball here, this is called traveling valve, traveling. Okay. So, you got standing valve, you got traveling valve, you, you got plunger, you got barrel and plunger will be connected to your sucker rod. Okay. And barrel is here, plunger inside there and you have to hold the barrel properly. So, you should have certain mechanism. Okay. If it is tubing, so some mechanism will be there. Okay. So, sometimes there is a nipple. So, you insert the pump uh, barrel and standing valve together inside tubing and there will be some holding device. So, insert it, the holding device will be holding the barrel there. If you are not holding, when you are lifting uh, the sucker rod up and down for okay, reciprocal motion you are doing. So, that time whole barrel also will be moving up and down. So, you have to hold it by some mechanism, this is called nipple. Okay. And this is tubing. Okay, this is tubing, tubing is I am shading it. Okay, I am giving some hatching line. This is tubing, this is nipple, a standing valve, traveling valve, and sucker rod. So, this whole assembly, this bottom hole assembly, they say standing valve, traveling valve, plunger, uh, and barrel, this all together called bottom hole assembly. So, bottom hole means this whole assembly can be inserted in the tubing. Okay. So, now this is called insert pump. So, whole assembly is inserted. So, it is called insert pump. Okay. So, you have designed or purchased plunger barrel, plunger, traveling all together, insert, then there will be some nipple, it will be holding at the bottom, then you run your sucker rod. 
ok when you are running continuously saccharot you will be delivering fluid. So, this is called insert pump ok another is tubing pump what is tubing pump? Tubing pump is that you do not add separately barrel actually tubing will be acting as a barrel. So, how it is works it will work like say this is my tubing ok this is my tubing or long pipe and in pipe there will be certain mechanism here to hold this traveling valve is uh, this standing valve because tubing is not moving. So, it will, it will create standing valve although valve will be moving small amount, but still it will be calling a standing valve because the whole barrel is not moving barrel is not moving that is why this the small ball or valve it will be moving only small distance ok. Although it is moving small distance, but still people will be calling it as a standing valve because barrel is not moving. So, its relative motion will be very few millimeter of few, 1 or 2 centimeter maybe. But traveling valve it is connected to your plunger when it is connected to plunger plunger is moving at very high rate when plunger is moving at very high rate inside ball also uh, you see in the picture inside ball ok ball also will be moving with the plunger ok it will be moving one small motion and because of plunger is moving. So, plunger is moving ball also moving, but because of certain action this ball some small motion will be there ok. So, because of plunger moving it is called traveling valve or so mm, in this lecture I will be using traveling valve means T V standing valve means S V ok and tubing type pump my standing valve is ok there is no problem this is standing valve standing valve ok and traveling valve will be like this. Okay, so, it may be threaded connected okay, and put on ball this is plunger this is my T V or traveling valve I altered. So, plunger will be moving inside tubing. So, you do not put any extra barrel. So, barrel means actually barrel will be taking certain space. So, if you want to get higher flow rate in that case tubing pump or without barrel pump is better because you are getting larger space larger space for pumping. So, your pumping rate will be uh, I will show uh, later pumping rate will be like area of the plunger into uh, stroke length how may how much distance is traveling. So, that volume will be de de uh, delivered in every time. So, if you are using tubing pump you are getting larger diameter of plunger ok larger pl plunger and let us say stroke length L. So, area of plunger let us say let us calculate it now A P plunger A P and stroke length plunger area is A P cross sectional area if you cut plunger cross sectional area A P and stroke length equals L. So, total volume is A P L. So, if I have same L or stroke length how much distance is traveling from bottom to top if I know the stroke length then A P increasing means my volume increasing. So, volume increasing means my delivery of fluid will be increasing. So, if I have tubing pump your volume is increasing. Now, another is the casing pump casing pump actually instead of tubing you directly use casing for pumping. So, you are getting much larger space. So, your volume flow rate will be very high ok, but every time you are not using casing pump because normally you will have tubing because you have gas and other issues. So, you will have one annular path. So, using that annular path you can get your gas out separately and you can get uh, you can pump liquid separately through tubing ok. And insert pump will be easier if there is any issue just remove the pump. Uh, make it corrected again in insert, but if you are having tubing pump if there is any problem in tubing then whole tubing you have to replace that will be expensive affair, but based on your flow rate and uh, economy you have to decide which one to select. So, before selecting you have to know there are different types of pump insert pump, tubing pump, casing pump and there will be other pumps such as long stroke pump, short stroke pump uh, ok. So, basically these three types, but if API instruction normally it will be insert pump and tubing pump. I will discuss later that one.
Okay, so traveling valve, standing valve, plunger valve. Okay, now you draw this plunger again. Okay, my plunger will be like this. I'm drawing a little bit bigger because I have to explain this plunger like this. Okay, well, let's say I'm assuming this is threaded. Okay, this is connected, and one ball is there, and my barrel is like this barrel will have also similar mechanism like this ok. So, this one I already told this is T V this is uh, no this is uh, standing wall S V this is T V this is my plunger. So, I am hatching this one this is plunger this is t, uh, this is barrel barrel sometimes I say cylinder ok. So, I will be putting different hatching line ok ok. Now, you got travelling valve, standing valve, plunger, barrel. Now, when rod is moving up and down moving up and down. So, what will happen? This my plunger will be moving up and down ok. When plunger is moving up and down your travelling valve and standing valve will have some small motion ok. So, this valve will have one cage actually called valve cage. What is valve cage? when plunger is moving up and down your standing valve actually moving up and down ok. So, the standing valve should not move too high when it is moving up plunger is moving up ok. When plunger is moving up moving up S V should not move too high not move too long distance ok. So, that is why they will be putting on valve cage. So, that a valve cage is like this lots of holes are there and one ball will be moving it will be moving up to this level again it will move down. So, within certain range it will move only ok. This is this area called valve seat this area called valve seat ok. This area is valve seat valve seat ok. So, valve seat area. So, the ball will be falling on the valve seat this is this is hole this is small hole and ball big ball will be sitting on it and ball will be touching the valve seat only ok. So, valve seat is like this ok. Valve seat design will be like this and ball is like this. When ball is falling on this valve seat it will be creating a leakage free area this area will be leakage free. So, surface area will be more. So, the valve seat will be designed such a way. So, that when ball is falling on this one it will create leakage free area ok. This will create leakage free area, but if you have a valve seat like this. So, you are getting point contact it will be damaging your ball actually. If you have very sharp pointer both and ball is falling here continuously when plunger will be moving up and down or beam pump will be working. So, that a ball will be moving up and down and continuously it will be hitting. If it is in sharp corner ball will be getting damaged ok it will be getting dented. So, if ball instead of circular shape it get dented what will happen this will give leakage ok. So, that is why this valve cage uh, valve seat is designed such a way. So, it will be like some curve will be there. So, when ball is falling over it just smoothly will be falling over it and it will be creating surface contact. So, there will be no damage on the ball ok. So, valve seat will be very smoothly curved properly and sometime it will be a softer material also so that some wear out is also no issue ok and it will be leakage free uh, uh, operation. Now, ball will be all rounded shaped 
and different shape. Uh, I don't know whether anyone has used, but uh, your hand pump operation for rural villages, they do not use ball type thing. There was flat flap type uh, on the standing and traveling bulb. Okay. So, the same uh, valve seat will be there for your traveling bulb also. Okay. For traveling also, the ball will be falling and the standing valve size will be more for in this case for insert type pump and traveling valve size will be, uh, size will be lower because you see traveling valve plunger, plunger size already reduced. So, if you put same size ball as a standing valve traveling valve, what will happen? Then uh, the flow path through the tra uh, traveling valve will be very low. So, this is flow path, right? Okay, there will be also gap actually. So, fluid will be passing through this. Fluid will be coming to here, it will going through there, it will go through there, it will go through there, it will go, it will go like this. Okay. So, similar way it will go like this. Okay. So, fluid from well bore to standing valve to valve cage. Okay. Here also one valve cage will be there. I forgot to put here also one valve valve cage will, will be there in your traveling valve. Okay. There are two valve cage will be there. So, two valve seats will be there, two balls will be there, but multiple balls pumps also available, but we are assuming that our pump is having one standing, one traveling valve, one valve seat, one, uh, one valve seat here, one valve seat here, one cage here, one cage here. Okay. So, when the fluid will be moving, so one by one this ball will be moving and you will get production. I will explain later how this bulb will be operating during operation, during pumping action. Okay. Okay, so whenever you are talking about APS subsurface, if APS surface pump unit, you know, we have seen that uh, notation like C dash, X, Y, Z dash, X, Y, Z this way. But this, when we are talking about subsurface part, it is taken from API specifications 11. So, API spec 11, A, X, B, something is there. So, all related to uh, Sakharad pump actually. So, API says what are the different types and wh what, will be, what should be the notation. So, if you see the table, Okay, stationary barrel when you are saying stationary barrel top anchored, so you write RHA, thin wall RWA. So, H means heavy wall, thin means thick wall. Okay, so barrel thickness will be deciding whether it will be heavy wall or th uh, thin wall. So, how stationary barrel works? Whatever figure I have drawn previously, okay, you are moving up and down and this barrel is fixed on tubing. Okay. So, barrel is fixed on tubing, nipple is there. So, this is called stationary barrel. Barrel is not moving. But in some cases, barrel will be moving. How the barrel will be moving? The design will be little bit different actually. Uh, this will be like this and plunger, okay. Ball is here and it is going down. It will be having like this. It will be having like this and there will be one ball here okay and it will be tube inside tubing let us say nipple is here okay nipple is here and if you see this is a rod sucker rod and traveling well standing this is T V this is S V okay So, you see the picture, this is actually your plunger, okay. This is your plunger. So, plunger is like this, plunger is going here, plunger is going here like this, okay. This is your plunger. Plunger is fixed actually, okay. Plunger is not moving. So, you hold the, yeah, sorry, plunger is, uh, this is traveling barrel, this is traveling barrel traveling okay this is traveling barrel pump traveling barrel pump this barrel uh, okay fix this one fix this one here okay so this barrel is moving 
okay when the rod will be moving up and down you see this barrel can move actually this one the barrel okay barrel is outside the plunger okay so barrel will be moving but your plunger is fixed on the tubing okay you see this nipple plunger is fixed on tubing so plunger is not moving but barrel is moving but in a previous case you have seen plunger is moving barrel is fixed so both are different so if i see this one traveling barrel option so this is my traveling barrel option and stationary barrel option this one is coming like this top anchored bottom anchor what is top anchored bottom anchor top anchored bottom anchor means you see this piston cylinder arrangement okay if i am holding at the bottom using nipple so it will be bottom anchored but if i am holding on the top of the barrel that will be called top anchored okay so barrel is there barrel bottom part i am holding so that is bottom anchored top part holding means top anchored okay and another option is the tubing pump i already explained and uh, h h means heavy wall barrel and w thin wall barrel um, okay what other things are there here heavy wall metal plunger okay and here notation you just uh, note down this one sometime uh, you have to remember actually so first notation normally this is tubing size first one will be tubing size second will be pump bore size and then pump type rhbc so rh you see r means stationary barrel h means heavy wall b means bottom anchored and c is uh, somewhere it will be written there okay c i'll check later c is written type of seating assembly c cup type or metal type so c is cup type and type of barrel heavy wall uh, the nominal plunger length is 4 feet they are saying length of upper holding 2 and lower holding uh, lower extension is 2 uh, upper extension also 2 so this way uh, th this is the barrel length 10 is the barrel length okay so you should understand this notation so whenever you are uh, fixing any artificial lifting system so you have to know surface notation and uh, subsurface notation and whenever you are talking to any customer or vendor who will be delivering you sucker pump or you are designing a sucker pump you should be familiar with these terms or notations so based on that you are buying or using your pumping systems